What's up, Internet? Welcome to the Yield Tomato Channel. <clears throat> we have just returned from the Portland Retro Video Game Expo, or PRGE 2015, and we got a lot of stuff. And this is going to be probably the longest pickups video I do, at least for the year. So, without further ado, I'm going to begin with some accessories. I picked up the Justifier and the uh, Player 2 Pink Justifier for the Sega Genesis or Sega CD or what anything that plugged into the damn thing. Um, it's a very interesting thing because I actually didn't notice this until after I picked them up, is the Pink Justifier doesn't say the Justifier on it like the... Uh, blue controller does, and it doesn't plug into another controller port. It plugs in to the bottom of the blue controller via a bone jack. Really interesting controller. Um, it also feels a little bit lighter, but that could be because of the extra attachment in the handle for the blue one. Um, but this is really sought after, and I was wanting to get this if for no other reason than to use it to play Snatcher, because... Pow, pow, bang! So, those are really cool finds that I was able to come across. I didn't see another pink justifier in the entire show, either. But, that being said, the show was massive, and I very well may have just went one side of the show, whereas the other was at the other side of the show. And that's the case for a couple of games uh, that I picked up this year. So, next, these are actually very, very interesting. Um... These are unreleased, unproduced production model um, samples for uh, DS cases. These three are actually for Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, if you aren't familiar with myself, uh, my girlfriend is super into Sonic the Hedgehog and Sega in general. Um, these are really interesting because they actually have, I'm going to do a close-up on them, a um, new product sample, and they have a model number. This is all handwritten, and uh, they have color differential and the date at which these were um, sent for approval. I'm assuming they were decided against for another uh, production style of some kind. Um, 9-6-2008, though, on this embroidered. And by the way, these embroideries on these things are absolutely gorgeous. They are super detailed. And um, only one of these actually isn't embroidered. This one is um, a silk screen on it. And these are all actually around the same time frame. They're all within a few days of each other. But they all have very different model numbers. They all have descriptions on them. And they have new product sample tags on the back of them. Now, the thing with um, product samples is even if they do hit mass production, the product samples are still, in my opinion, going to be more desirable because they are generally made with better care. There's usually more detail in a product sample. A lot of people threw a fit about how Amiibos didn't look as good as the they did when they were shown at E3 at first. It's like, well, that's because those were product samples. They weren't the mass produced versions. They were showing you higher detailed production samples. So... These are actually really cool um, to find a couple things like that. Now, granted, Sonic is a really big name, so there's probably more stuff like this out there. Um, but they're really cool to just, you know, look at and just think about what could have been. Like, how much would they have charged for these? I'm sure probably like 15 to $20, but it's just one of those... It's a cool novelty thing to have, so those were cool to find. Um, and at that same booth, um, I spotted a Metal Gear Solid 2 disc wallet. This was also a production model. Um, and actually, the tag is right on the inside of it. Um, yeah, let's see. And it does have a production date, too, which is really cool. These are all from the ALS uh, Industries Incorporated. Uh, just MGS2-20, a new product sample. I'll probably try and do some close-ups on all these later. Um, but... It's 
got, again, really, really detailed embroidery. Uh, there's not a lot of design on it, but you've got the the title and the all that on there, which is really cool. Um, but I actually tried to uh, Google this one and um, see, like, eBay search it, and could not find a single thing on it. So that was really kind of neat, because, like, under sold listings, under listings, there's no such thing as a disc wallet, disc holder for Metal Gear Solid 2. So finding this was really sweet. Um, I don't know if I'm ever going to use it, but it's just a cool thing to have. Big Metal Gear fan, big Resident Evil fan, big Final Fantasy fan, big Castlevania fan. These are the things that I do. Uh, and actually, I'm a big RPG fan in general. And um, one of the items I pulled out up there, I just put it in there for safekeeping, is a um, trade demo for Dot Hack Part 2. Now, the question is, is it Dark, the, the original Dot Hack 4 series, or is this Dot Hack GU Part 2? Um, I don't know yet. But I will find out. It's most likely uh, Quarantine from the original series. But I personally collect trade demos. I really think they're a cool piece of, uh, of gaming memorabilia and gaming history because these are essentially uh, sent as review builds. And in some cases, they have uh, minor differences between the official release. Um, I actually have some other trade demos from the Dot .hack series that were actually handwritten on instead of printed labels like this. And I would actually believe them to be fake were it not for the person I got them from having been sent them directly from Bandai. So it's, um, things like these are really cool and I like to collect them, especially the printed ones like this, because they're effectively the full game in most cases, but they are different. These were not meant for public consumption, if you will. So I always thought they were really cool things, so I, I try to get my hands on these whenever I can, particularly if they're RPGs or from a series that I'm really, really infatuated with. Um, so yeah, these are really cool, and I'm glad I was able to find one this year. Uh, now, we also picked up a couple of... Um, well, actually, they're a little bit more than just one gen ago, but we've got um, Arkrise Fantasia, which... Um, I, there was one here locally in um, town I'm in, however, it had seen much better days. The cover was completely thrashed and shredded, and it was, like, just so disgusting. But when we saw this one, uh, it had the added bonus of having this high-res print, which I believe was a pre-order bonus with it, which was really neat. And it's also from uh, Marvelous Entertainment, which is kind of cool. Marvelous generally makes really good games, and I've heard mixed things about this one, but it was one I kind of had my eye out for, and uh, we happened to spot it at uh, one of the booths where we were picking up a couple things, so that was kind of a fun one to get. Uh, we also got Mana um, and this actually happens to be their premium edition, or their special edition. Um, it includes original soundtrack featuring 33 songs from the game, a beautiful and rare mini poster. See, this thing I don't like. You're calling it rare. It's because you're the ones producing it. You're making it that. Uh, that aside, um, it's also got a reversible CD cover and a uh, weapon stat cheat sheet. So that's kind of neat. Um, but uh, from stuff from NIS, we really like. We try to get our hands on those. Uh, this was actually new. Uh, it's a little beat up, but sure enough, the actual game inside is uh, also factory wrapped. This was wrapped as well, but the wrapping let, let us to believe it might have been a a rewrapping, so we, of course, opened that and double-checked on it. And we also picked up a second copy of Fantasy Star Portable 2. Uh, we did that specifically so we can play together if we choose to. Um, anything that's got a cooperative play like that, uh, my other half and I try to get two copies of We have two copies of Valkyria Chronicles 2, two copies of the first Fantasy Star Portable, Two copies of uh, Dissidia, oddly enough. So, that's always cool when you have co-op on the handheld. Now, courtesy of one of our uh, favorite vendors that we visit every year, we always pick something up from him. Because um, he always has stuff that we're interested in. Record of Argos War, the really naughty limited edition. Um, and actually... <laughs> This comes with some really interesting um, extras in here. 
Um, it comes with the original soundtrack with 26 uh, tracks on it, which is awesome. It has a yearning pillowcase of one of the female protagonists. And it has a sensual 3D Vera Lore mouse pad. Um, and my other half actually asked if I wanted to use it as a mouse pad because I don't have a mouse pad on my computer desk. And um, when they say 3D, um, it's a mouse pad of a woman with tits. And the tits are plush and actually very comfortable. I've actually debated uh, getting mouse pads that have that same kind of plush matting for my wrist. Um, but I'm, I'm not actually using it because, well, that'd get me some funny looks when we have company over. Um, but this is really cool. We already had the game, but we didn't have the special edition. And when we, you know, saw it and we saw who it was, we you were know, like, yeah, we're going to buy it. I mean... And he works with us every year, so shout out to Danny. That was awesome. And we also picked up a couple little promotional items and strategy guides. Um, actually, only one strategy, uh, two strategy guides, because there were a few I was going to pick up, but I couldn't remember for sure if I had them or not. I should probably categorize or um, take note of what guides I do have. Um, but we got an unopened behind-the-scenes DVD for Nights into Dreams. I have no idea, um, I actually can't, I don't think we had this, but we probably didn't. Um, but it's a Sonic Team item, and the Knights games are actually fun. I enjoy them, I'm not the best at them, but they are fun, they're very, uh, tranquil to play. So this is kind of a cool thing, I'm guessing this is, yeah, DVD, uh, DVD use, so it's like a looping video demo, I'm sure. But that's kind of cool. I've got one for Resident Evil 4 as well. And, uh, I think I have one for Zero, too. Uh, we also picked up the ever, getting ever harder to find, Animal Crossing New Leaf Strategy Guide with the, um, slipcover. Um, Jackie is really, really into the Animal Crossing series, so getting this was a no-brainer when we saw it. And, again, like many other things, the only one we saw at the show. Uh, doesn't mean it was the only one there, but it's the only one we saw. And this, I mean... <laughs> if you grew up in the 90s like we did, this, these games were a massive, massive part of your childhood. The Triple Pack Strategy Guide for Pokemon. Um, yellow, red, and blue. All three of them are effectively the same game, with some variations between red and blue and some bigger differences in yellow. Essentially, this guide went through and, uh, in each part you went to, showed you the segments for each game and gave you, you know, all the need to know to get through it, and to get through it effectively. Uh, but this was really cool. Kind of, like, uh, takes place of what would normally be two books all in one, so that's kind of a nice thing to have. And it's... I mean, it's got literally the mascot of the franchise right on the cover there, which is, which is nice. So, those were cool things to get. Much like everything else and that we got and everything everyone else got, the show is fantastic. If you guys ever get a chance to go to Portland, uh, Portland, Oregon, and go to the PRGE, it is totally worth it. We have gone every year for the last six years. This was our sixth year going, and we do not plan to stop anytime soon. Yeah, the show gets bigger every year, and it's more and more fun every year. So now, for some of the more expensive items that uh, we picked up this year. Um, we got ourselves a copy of Burning Rangers on the Saturn, and Wild Guns on the Super Nintendo. Um, Jackie was kind of after this one. Um, I was kind of after this one. So it was kind of like a joint, yeah, we should get it, because we both think it looks fun. We both think it looks interesting. And the Saturn games are... I think the Saturn's one of the more underrated systems. Uh, it didn't have a whole lot of um, variety to it, and a whole lot of support outside of Sega. But they had some really good titles. I mean, looking up at my shelf right now, Dragon Force, Panzer Dragoon Saga, Saw... Uh... Actually, I don't remember if I played any of this on the game, but it had a Resident Evil on there. It had this. It had um, Guardian Heroes, which we're also looking for, so that was kind of... But 
saw this and this at the same booth, so we got that. And Wild Guns, um, I'm normally not a... I used to emulate stuff a lot, and I've decided that the only t reason I'm going to emulate anything anymore is if it, A, never came out in this country, and it's a patched or hacked copy, or B, if I'm going to try it just to see if I want to own it. I tried this and determined I had to own it. I absolutely love Wild Guns. It is a fantastic arcade-style shooter. And it's, uh, remember, it's two-player. So that was really cool that I got these. And I got these right away. Like, the moment we walked in, I saw displays with these just propped right up, along with a copy of Panzer Dragoon Saga and all kinds of other really expensive games. And um, so I just bought them, because if I didn't, I was going to regret it, because... I passed up on a copy of Panzer Dragoon Saga at a price I was comfortable with one year. The next year, I had the opportunity again, and I was like, if I don't do it, I'm going to regret it. I'm going to complain about it all year long. So I bought it, and I'm so glad I did. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, we've been playing Panzer Dragoon Saga on the channel, and we're having a lot of fun with it. The game is absolutely superb and so much fun to play. So adding these to the collection, super thrilled to do. Um, now, I only got one 3DS game, and that's because, well, it's a modern thing, and I mostly get older games at the Retro Fair. Legend of Legacy. Um, this was recommended to me by, uh, the same friend of mine that, uh, got, gave me a bunch of trade demos in the past. Um, he pretty much said that this is a game he would highly recommend to me. He said the game is very challenging. But he said it is very reminiscent of old RPGs that I am quite fond of and familiar with. So I looked at it, and I absolutely fell in love with the art style, both the chibi and the uh, detailed artwork. And the gameplay looks great, so I'm really excited to have got my hands on a copy of the launch edition, because, well, the launch edition came with a art book and soundtrack, and I am a sucker for those things. So, now we're going to get into the handhelds. It was literally year of the handheld for us at the show. I think we... Most of the games we got were all handheld games. And we're going to uh, start with the oldest and our work our way to the more recent titles. Uh, alphabetically, even, because I'm organized and a nut job like that. Now, the box on this is rather rough, but it is complete... And it is, everything inside of it is super minty. Castlevania Legends. This is not only the first game I believe that they've actually gone with a sort of anime art style, which is most uh, noted on the back of the box here. It's easier to see. But it's also the only game in the timeline to have been officially stricken. Um, for whatever reason, the director of this particular game was super not happy with something about it. Felt ashamed and embarrassed, and just decided that it was not a part of the uh, Castlevania canyon. And um, to add even more credence to that fact, uh, if you got the special pre-order book stuff from Portrait of Ruin, it lists every game, uh, timeline placement, with the exception of this one. So that's actually really cool. I like the history behind that, and I like the, uh, the character and ideas behind this game. Because the whole idea is the end of the game alludes to um, the main character, Sonia Belmont, um, getting together with Alucard. And from that point forward, linking the Belmonts to Dracula by blood. That is a super, super cool idea. Making it a family-based vendetta after so many years and having it continue so long in their history. It's actually a really cool concept. So I was blown away that I actually found one of these at the show. I did not expect to, especially not in box. Um, but it was definitely on my list of games to acquire, along with the Panzer, or not the Panzer, the uh, Burning Rangers and the Wild Guns. So th this is just another addition to this epic haul that we've gotten, and it's just, it gets bigger and better. So we also picked up a uh, Harvest Moon Game Boy Color 1. There are three Harvest Moon games on the Game Boy Color. And, um, well, this is the first one. Uh, you can play it on the original Game Boy, but it's got uh, added features for the color version. 
So, um, this was a cool thing. Uh, Jackie's really into it. Uh, really into Harvest Moon games and stuff like that. Farming and simulating games in general. Uh, so this was a cool thing to find. This one's actually super fresh because it's actually still got the original wrapping around the box. Uh, it's just been very carefully opened at the top. So whoever originally had this took super good care of it, which is always nice. Now this next one was like... It, to put it in perspective, I've seen many things throughout the years of the Retro Fair. I've seen... A handful of Panzers, a handful of Wild Guns, a handful of Evos, a handful of um, Burning Rangers, a handful of all these things. I can't recall a time that I have seen a complete in-box Metal Gear Solid Game Boy Color. Uh, in Japan, known as Ghost Babble Metal Gear. Um, so, this was actually like my my biggest goal to find was to find this, and I did not expect to find it complete like this. Um... It had a lot of GameStop labels on it, on the box, but I uh, meticulously and very carefully removed most of it. It's going to take a little bit more work to clean it up, like, perfectly, but I'm happy with it the way it is now. Uh, the game is super, super awesome. Um, I started playing it, and I was kind of blown away, actually, um, by what they did in it. Like, I've played Shantae, and it does a lot of cool things um, with the, the exploration factor and everything for the Game Boy Color. This does a lot of really interesting things mechanically, too, that I did not expect in a Game Boy Color game. Uh, fairly complex controls, and it... Like, there's a segment where you can literally... Gr you go prone in the game, for one, which is really out there, but when you're, like, trucking through mud or tall grass, there's a segment for you to go, there's like a emphasis for you to go prone there to hide out of sight and get past guards in that manner. Um, and if you're doing it under the mud, you have to worry about no two meter. I mean, there's a lot of depth to this, and they've even got the uh, cigarettes, with their, which they're calling fog machines, or foggers, which is stupid, but uh, E for everyone. So, that's the reasoning. But, I mean, for the laser grid, so you can avoid detection that way, it's got a lot of really cool things in it. So this was super awesome to find there. Um, I'm just so glad to have this now, because I'm almost done getting all the Metal Gear games complete in box. There's only a uh, very, I think, one or two that I'm missing total. Uh, next up is Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. I now have all of the uh, GBA games complete in box. And this is the last one I got, partially because it's also the one I had the least interest in. I don't like the whole idea of it being uh, the future. That kind of bugs me. Um, that being said, it's still a very, very solid Metroidvania game, and I'm super glad to add that to the collection and finally finish that off. Um, just for kicks and giggles, and for all the mini games, my girlfriend really loved this show. Um, Ham Tower Ham Ham Games. This was super affordable, complete in box game, and I love getting old games complete in box. It's something just that we like to have because it. It's artwork, and it gives you the manual, gives you the instructions, it gives you everything that you were supposed to have when you got the game. So we try to get those as often as we can, and this, as you can see, we found quite a few of them this year. Uh, we also picked up Sonic Advance Complete in Box. Say what you will about Sonic the Hedgehog, but his, his games are not as bad as people give it credit for. Uh, people get really upset because of the way things changed and the way things went downhill, uh, because the quality seemed to go down. And, quite frankly, I don't agree with all of it. I do agree with some of it. But, these are still really solid games. Um, the advanced games were actually very, very akin to classic Sonic, which is great. And, to go with Sonic Advance 1, we also got Sonic Advance 3. Uh, because we couldn't find Sonic Advance 2. Where do we have it? Oh, we have it. So, there. Now we have all three Sonic Advance games uh, complete in their boxes. So, that's kind of neat. Uh, this one I've gotten the clamshell because uh, the box is a little bit more beat up, uh, so I wanted to protect it a little bit more. And we also got from Atlas both the Summon Knight games on the Game Boy Advance, uh, Swordcraft Story 1 and 2. Um, I'm not super familiar with these games. Um... 
but the art style is really intriguing, and most of the time when it comes to Atlas games, I just I just get them because they're really enjoyable. And uh, actually, Jackie grabbed these. Uh, she spotted these and picked these up, so that's really cool that we were able to get both these. And to top that even, that's right, we even got the uh, Summon Knight Twin Age for the DS, just because that's more Summon Knight for us to play. Um, this one, if I remember, is a pseudo-tactics game of some sort. I'm not sure if that's the same as the other ones. Um, but, yeah, so, more Summon Knight, more Atlas, more great RPG fun. And, uh, we also picked up, now these are the last three of the game, uh, GB, the handheld games, pardon me. We got Lost in Blue 2, which, um, kind of like a survival game where you have to, well, as I said, survive, uh, generally on an island, and, uh, the second and first games or pardon me, second and third games let you choose your gender, which is really cool. So it kind of adds a little bit more, makes the game a little bit more personal as you're playing it. Um, we also got Luminous Arc 1. We have Luminous Arc 2. Uh, we saw it and we bought it um, actually locally. And then we started looking for the first one, never found it. Found a couple of them at the Retro Fair. And um, oddly enough, we bought the first one we saw, but it was actually the local, which is kind of interesting. Um, then we also picked up A Witch's Tale. Now, there's another game in that series uh, called Witch's Wish uh, that I have yet to find or see, but it's definitely one we're keeping an eye out for. NIS uh, makes a selection of really good games just like Atlas that we're really fond of, so it's cool to get to add more of those to the collection. And as you can see, the collection's getting quite large when it comes to um, their handheld games, so I think we're probably about filled out with the ones we're interested in at this point, because I can't think of any more. Um... Now, with all that, we also picked up another hacked game, or another uh, ROM hack. And this is a really interesting one. Uh, we actually turned it on and watched the, the demo because they had a Retron playing. It's called Sonic Classic Heroes. It is Sonic Heroes 16-bit. Say what you will about Sonic Heroes, but I really like the concept. I really like the idea. And I, it's really cool to see that they implemented that in a 16-bit stage style, so um, I'm actually kind of interested in playing this because I like Sonic Heroes. So that was kind of a cool thing to find, too. Um, I've been more open to ROM hacks and uh, translations and stuff on cartridge. I haven't seen a whole lot that I was super interested in, though, recently, so I really didn't get any this year. Um, now, to continue with the Sonic theme, they do have a lot of Shadowbox pixel art um, with beadwork at the shows. And I didn't get any because the ones I wanted were a bit too expensive. Um, but Jackie got a Super Sonic with the Chaos Emeralds surrounding him. This is actually really cool. And the Shadow Box is actually really sturdy, really stable, really nice. Um, and it doesn't take up a whole lot of room. It's a fairly small one. So we can hang it at any given point in the room and it would uh, fit in very perfectly. We'd be able to put stuff around it no problem. So this is actually, I'm kind of interested to see where she wants to put it, because I haven't figured out where, I, where I'd want it either. Um, but this is a really cool thing. We're not going to get a whole lot of these when we go to the show next year um, either. Maybe one or two I can think of I might want to get, but it all depends on if I have the money, because the games come first for me. And she actually picked that up at the very, like at the end of the second day, so uh, games go first for her too. And we also got a couple of figures. Um, she does not have this, uh, bend she did not have this bendable Knuckles figure, which was not in its package, and it's a little beat up, a little, it's clearly well used, well loved. Um, so she picked it up just because she's got a couple of loose, she's got a little, uh, drawer of loose figures in the closet, and this one she did not have, so picked that up, I think it was like a dollar or something. And, um... We also picked up, this one she could never get her hands on because at the time it was available, uh, no Toys R Us anywhere near us. And this is a Toys R Us exclusive, Sonic the Werehog figure. Um, not a lot of Werehog merchandise got made, so this was something she wanted to snag. And I spotted it with uh, a couple of other figures and little collectibles, so we, uh, we bundled things together and got a little bit of a deal on them. So that was kind of cool. 
Now, this is an exclusive from some show. I don't remember what show, though. But this is the, um, the, uh, active camo variant of Old Snake from Metal Gear Solid 4. And transparent because of the active camo. That's why I call it active camo. Um, it's got all the same detailings and edgings as the standard version. just doesn't have any kind of painting or coloring on it. It's completely clear. Um, so this is kind of a cool thing. I'm a big Metal Gear fan. Um, so this was a cool thing to get. I don't have a whole lot of Metal Gear figures. I'm hoping to start collecting some of the McFarlane toy ones for uh, Metal Gear Solid 2. And maybe get some Square Enix figures from um, from 5. But we'll see where things go from there. And we also, I don't remember where she found this one, but she got a uh, Sonic the Hedgehog watch. I'm trying to see what year this one is. This is a 1995 watch. Uh, it's a small little blue watch. Uh, black and blue with a little bit of red on it, which the red doesn't make a lot of sense because it looks like blood splatter. Um, <laughs> but uh, this is just a cool little collectible to add to the selection. And now we also got, this is the last item we got, and that's a um, Sonic the Hedgehog LCD wristwatch. Courtesy of John Hancock. Uh, he, I guess, got like a lot of five LCD watches and games. And uh, this was in there, and I saw it at his booth, and it was behind the counter, and I just like stepped forward before my girlfriend really could say anything. I just said, you see that there? She's like, oh, no, I see it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask. And I went up and I asked him how much he would want for this, and he said, he said, what are you willing to pay? Um... Just like, shoot me an offer. And um, I looked at her and said, well, this is you. Offer as much as you're willing to pay for it. And she did, and he agreed. And uh, we looked up online later. Um, it's absolutely brand new. She got a good deal on it. I mean, straight up. And um, granted, he got a... I know John got a really good deal on the lot as a whole. Um, but individually, this sells for 15 to $20 more than what we paid for it. So, that was really cool that we still ended up getting a good deal. And John's a really nice guy. Um, we support him in the Call Series games for kids. We buy his collection discs that he does, his new ones, every year when he does them. So, and we're going to continue to do that because we actually really like uh, watching because he has such a huge collection. It broadens our spectrum. It lets us see, well, what else would we be willing to collect on systems we may not have yet? It's really encouraging and it really uh, keeps us searching for new things to look into and play. So... That's it for our 2015 Portland Retro Video Game Expo pickups. What do you guys think of what we got this year? Let us know in the comments below. Um, is there anything in particular you'd like to see us do a Let's Play on? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to cry, complain, moan, and groan that we got something that you want, put it in the comments below. Let us know. Um, whatever you guys want to do. I mean, just if you send us a message, if you post a comment, we'll do what we can to get back to you and, you know, engage in conversation. Video games are an amazing thing. They bring so many people together and give us so much joy and fun and pleasure. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, be sure to check back regularly for new videos, most of them Let's Play, some of them Pickups, and others just, um, me going into detail about games that I love and things that I love about gaming. So, until next time, guys, thanks for watching.